This thing has so much potential to be an amazing accessory for an impressively wide range of people. And yet, as it stands, I'm not sure that I could recommend it to anyone. This is Avermedia's Livestreamer AX310, a somewhat confused mix of audio interface and also a stream deck. On the back, you'll find a DC in jack. Yes, this thing needs wall power, alongside a USB-B port, SPDIF input, a 3.5mm input, an XLR and quarter inch combo jack, a light out, and headphones out as well. On the front, you'll find uh, a 5 inch IPS touchscreen, 4 massive silicon soft buttons, and 6 labeled volume dials. Confused yet? The idea clearly is that you can combine both your XLR mic input and your Stream Deck like functionality into one unit. Although that actually sets a pretty high bar. It not only has to be a, a good XLR input device, but it also has to match what is undeniably the standard right now, which is Elgato Stream Deck. So, how well does it do it both? Let's take a look. On the mic input side, well, you've been hearing that, and actually you will continue hearing that throughout this video. I'm using a Shure MV7 here, uh, a mic that normally requires a whole lot of gain, and, well, yeah, I'm at 100% gain here, so clearly nothing changes. But the quality is pretty decent. It's everything that I would expect from this mic, so not too bad there. I did have some headphones plugged into the headphones port during my testing and enabled the uh, sort of hear back, the, the monitoring uh, option, and found that there was a bit of processing delay between me actually speaking into the mic and hearing it on the headphones. It wasn't a big enough delay to do the whole speech jamming thing, but it was enough to feel like I had a, a chorus effect pedal enabled while trying to listen to myself. One thing I should note on the audio side is that the six dials on the front edge are fixed. What their labels say they do is all they do. You can't reprogram them in the software, you can't set them to control an audio source, say in OBS, or manage anything other than the audio that is directly running through this unit. The system dial doesn't even control your system audio level itself. It only controls the output level from this thing, not the Windows level that most other devices, if they include a you know, volume dial for your system, would control instead. That just seems a bit strange to me. On the Steam Deck front then, that's where I feel like this starts to fall behind. The fact that they've gone with an unobstructed touchscreen does give the AX310 some unique options for multi-block panels. In fact, the standard audio com uh, sort of controls and visualization panel is a full page, which is great. But it does also have its drawbacks. Unlike the Steam Deck, which has physical push-in buttons, or even the Loop Deck Live, which has a haptic motor to give the kinesthetic feedback you need when you push a button, the AX310 has very little in the way of feedback. The only thing you get is when you push one of the buttons, the actual button on screen you know, changes ever so slightly, darkens or whatever, to show that you've pressed it. Except that's the bit that's under your finger, so it's a lot less intuitive than having any level of actual feedback, or even in the LoopTex case, physical guides as well, to make sure that you're easily pressing the right button. This takes a lot more of a concerted effort to look at where you're pressing and press the exact right one, rather than more muscle memory to just ta quickly tap whatever you need to have happen. When it comes to what actions you can map here, that's also a bit of a letdown. As you might expect, you can map all of Avermedia's own software options, like their re-central streaming software, along with basic things like web links and text entry. You can use OBS actions, but there's a catch. Unlike every other control pad that I've used, Avermedia decided to not use the standard OBS API to control your stream and their software. Now, instead, you need to install their own OBS plugin, which creates a WebSocket that the AX310 connects to locally. 
This does mean that you do get a few more options than standard, although I should mention Elgato just updated their software to add a whole load more native options too, but it's another thing that you need to install just to make this thing work, and you have to hope that that plugin is reliable enough to not mess up your stream or recordings. Something I can't guarantee, as I had an issue where the entire unit just wouldn't register any touch inputs until I restarted my whole PC. Hell, if you, if you visit avermedia.com rather than www.avermedia.com, you'll get a fail to load SSL error because their DNS records aren't set up correctly. Is that the sort of thing that you can trust to run your, in this case, literal business? I'm not so sure. The main feature that Avermedia was excited for me to test with this was the voice mod support. They even gave me a one month trial to voice mod pro. And sure, it is cool to be able to control these options from this, although unsurprisingly the stream deck supports all of those actions too. But as far as I can tell, there aren't any benefits to voice mod running with the AX310 compared to using even a USB mic with no audio interface, especially since voice mod is just a standalone program that you have to have running. It's not a native plugin on the unit itself. You know, you can even use your phone to control the stuff in voice mod rather than this. So I'm not entirely sure what the benefit is, but sure, it's funny to have your uh, you know, voice changed to sound like it's on helium. Something that I think is beautifully symbolic of the lack of polish that the user experience of this thing has is trying to install one of their currently just five optional plugins. Let's say you wanted to install the voice mod plugin, right? Makes sense. Well, there is a widget store option down at the bottom left, so let's just open that and... Wait, why is a web browser open? No way, okay, fine, maybe maybe that download button opens in their control center software to download the... Uh, oh no, it's, it's just downloading a like sketchy dot creator central file that you just have to hope isn't malware, and then manually import their software in the so like you have to actually like open a file explorer and oh okay um let me show you how to install a plugin on the stream deck you click on the store icon you click plugins you click download done no web browser needed no file imports needed and a lot lot less sketchy and there are literally hundreds or even thousands of plugins available there are icon packs, royalty-free songs, and sound effects that are all there. The AX310, like I said, currently has a total of just five plugins, and one of them is a clock. They mention ongoing development as a selling point on their product page, but I can't evaluate a product based on future functionality that may or may not ever come. The biggest thing for me is that beyond the fact that this is also an audio interface or input device, this doesn't distinguish itself well enough to be a suitable replacement for a stream deck. The loop deck that I mentioned, that can do streaming stuff, sure, but it also integrates really well with the Adobe suite of apps to act as an editing control pad too which is why I have both a Stream Deck XL and a Loop Deck Live on my desk right now. When I first unpacked the AX310, my first thought was that this could be a great little live looper unit. It could do with having another XLR quarter inch kind of combo input to be able to connect both a mic and an instrument, but even still, you could use the, the big four buttons as record options, uh, set the dials to control different things like reverb and distortion and overdrive, and the display can allow for further controls, uh, sound placements, and even visualizations of the recorded sounds. But as it stands, that isn't even remotely possible especially since you can't remap those dials at all. Now, the vast majority of the issues that I've mentioned here are fixable with firmware updates. The dials being hard-coded, uh, probably not, nor the fact that this is an IPS panel with horrible IPS glow. I know would have been much nicer here, 
but that's what I mean about this having lots of potential. With enough work in software updates, this could be an excellent bit of kit. As it stands though, well, I think I would rather grab a Stream Deck and something like a Focusrite Scarlet Solo for pretty much the same sort of money than one of these. I'm going to keep my eye on this though, as I think, like I said, with a decent amount of development, maybe in a, a few months time, it might actually be a great option. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the AX310 live streamer? Is it something you would pick up yourself? Would you go with uh, a more sort of, I guess, conventional split solution with an audio input device and something like a stream deck? Also, how much does having an XLR mic actually matter to most streamers these days? I feel like a lot of them tend to use USB mics like Elgato's Wave you know, 1 and 3s and that sort of thing. So I definitely like to hear your thoughts there. If you want to check out the AX310, I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link, a global Amazon affiliate link to it in the description down below for you to check out. Uh, I'll also probably leave a link to the MV7 if you're interested in that too. Uh, and if you want to see more videos from me, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out plenty more videos on the end cards. There's like 1,500 but at this point, so feel free to go check some of them out. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one.